Oh my goodness, what have I drug in this time? This is a first for me, I think. I can't remember doing something like this before. This is something I saved from the side of the road. It is a Hitachi 21-inch color TV made in 1983. It's the model MT2110C. And I picked this up off the side of the road this morning. There's this house here in town. I don't know if it used to be a bed and breakfast or what, but um, for the past many weeks, uh, just on random days, they'd put tons of old crap out on the side of the road for people to just grab. Um, and I've never pulled over and stopped. I was always in my car driving by, um, and I just didn't feel like stopping. I never caught a glance of anything that prompted me to stop. Well, this morning, I drove by that house, and I saw this, and I immediately made a U-turn, drove past again to get a second look, made another U-turn, pulled over, and threw this thing in my back seat. Uh, I am so excited. I have not tested this yet. Um, it doesn't look like it was left out in the elements. I think uh, it, it was all dry and everything, so I think they just put it out this morning, which is good. So aside from the bottom being slightly damp from sitting on the ground, uh, I don't think this was exposed to the elements. I have not tested this yet. We are going to do that today in this video. And I am so excited because the aesthetic of this TV set is so cool. Look at the wood grain. And uh, it's a real simple set. It's got the rotary knobs. And I just love the design right down to the, to the red, green, blue color logo. And it's just so, it's so cool. And it's the perfect size. I've been wanting a TV just like this, something around 21 inches. Now granted, this was for back in my old apartment. Um, my last few months of living there, I, I had actually managed to find space to put kind of a VHS movie watching setup in my bedroom. Uh, on my dresser, I used the uh, Sony uh, CVM 1271 12-inch video monitor and my uh, Panasonic VHS VCR. And I watched a few uh, VHS movies on it. But I always thought, man, wouldn't it be cool if I could find like a slightly bigger, really wood grainy TV for this setup? Well, here it is. Now here's the thing, and, and this is going to answer the title of the video. I didn't just get this TV off the side of the road. I got two. <laughs> Two absolutely identical sets. That's what makes me think this building was maybe a bed and breakfast. These TVs are the exact same model, absolutely identical. And yep, there were two of them sitting there, and I picked them both up. Threw one in the back seat, threw one in my passenger seat. So, this is amazing. Two vintage TVs. I don't want both. I only want one. But I grabbed them both so that I have twice the chance that one of them will work. <laughs> if they both end up working, I'll uh, throw one up for free on Facebook Marketplace and, and hope that someone else who would love something like this can take it. But we'll find out. You know, it's funny. Uh, you probably know if you've seen my videos before. I often judge the size of things. Like when I buy stuff on eBay, I judge how big or small it's actually going to be when it arrives. It's funny, when I saw these on the side of the road, and even when I had them in my car, uh, these, I thought these were like 15 inch, um, but they are in fact 21 inch sets. These uh, remind me a lot of my childhood TV. It was uh, one of those cheap Korean sets sold by Juton International. It was a Juton Concerto brand. This is a Juton Concerto. Model JCTV2354 Color TV. It was made in uh, April of 1985. It was made in Korea. That was a cheap, cheerful, Korean-built TV. Um, 
but it was a rock solid TV. It still worked perfectly when we gave it away in the late 2000s, I think. So these remind me a lot of that. Certainly the same kind of feature set with the mechanical tuning and all that. So I just can't wait to test these. Uh, really anxious to see uh, what the working condition of them is. So I'm going to be testing these just because who knows how many years they've been powered on and also they sat outside for at least a few hours. I'm going to be testing these on a dim bulb tester. This is one that I built myself. You can tell because of how, well, how safety was of utmost importance in its construction. A dim bulb tester, so basically what this is, is uh, this is just a standard outlet, and that's a standard light switch. The light switch just cuts power to everything. These outlets are actually wired independently. This outlet's wired in series with this outlet, and I've got one of these uh, lamp socket adapters plugged in. And I've got a 300 watt incandescent bulb. And this just allows me to plug something in. And the 300 watt incandescent bulb serves as a safety against something shorting out. If something shorts out, the incandescent bulb will limit the current. I'm not sure. I don't know how much power these TVs are going to want to draw. I don't know if a 300 watt bulb is a... Uh, is uh, big enough. Worst case scenario, it'll just simulate a brownout condition for the TV. But that's how I'm gonna test these. So, I guess we'll just start with the one on the left here and uh, we'll see what it does. I'm a little bit nervous. All right, I got everything plugged in. I'm a little nervous, um, but I'll turn on the dim bulb tester here. No current draw, that's good because it's turned off. Volume's down all the way and I'm just going to turn it on. That is not, oh, 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 oh my gosh, is there sound? It's fine. Yay! Oh my god, I'm so happy. So, I thought it, something was super wrong at first because, one, the dim bulb, uh, you saw the bright flash, which TVs have in rush current when you first turn them on. Um, but then it dimmed right down. You can barely see it glowing now. So I thought, well, that's drawing way too little power. But it's not. Um, and then, of course, I... There's no 15 kilohertz wine. Now, granted, I have, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had, I, I developed a really severe cold. Um, I'm still dealing with the aftermath, the after effects of it. One of them being my hearing is severely damaged. Uh, my hearing is so bad right now, everything's super muffled. So it's possible that I would normally hear the 15 kilohertz whine because I'm definitely sensitive to it. Um, uh, but I don't hear anything. And so I thought, oh no, this thing isn't doing anything. There's no 15 kilohertz whine, but here we go. So I'm just going to kind of let this eat <laughs> for a few minutes just right here. Uh, oh, the dials glow. Oh, that's so cool. And the UHF dial glows. It glows green. I didn't expect that. Oh, that's awesome. So I'll put on channel 3. Let me find something. Uh, I'll grab a VCR. These are RF only, of course. It's a standard television set. Um, I'll grab a VCR and plug it in. And we'll see what kind of a picture this makes. It's a few minutes later. Got the Panasonic hooked up here. Ah, RF input works. Great. I got my copy of Citizen Kane. I haven't used this VCR in a few months, so I don't know if it'll give me any issues with playing the tape, but let's pop it in here and 
and see what we get. I can't believe the volume control wasn't even scratchy. That looks okay, I think. The movie Memories of a Lifetime. I don't know if that song's gonna trigger copyright or not. That looks okay. Uh, the color's a little strong. There are dials on the bottom here. I don't know. Ugh. There, that looks a bit better. Let's get you in here so you can see this. Hi there, I'm Robert Osborne and welcome to the Turner Classic Movies home video presentation of Citizen Kane. It's a film that many people... So it definitely, I mean, it, at first glance it seems to be fine. I mean, the picture fills the whole screen and, uh, and color's still a little strong. Let me dial that back. Uh, oh, I do see some blooming on the red. Uh, so that's the middle point. There's the middle point for the color. So I've seen some blooming right here. I'm not sure if that's... I don't know. I'm going to look at something else to see uh, how good or bad that's going to be. I'm not sure how to judge it because, I mean, the first thing I notice is obviously this was, you know, a cheap and cheerful TV. I mean, not as cheap as not as cheap and cheerful as the the Juton I had um, but it's got a very coarse mask on it you can clearly see the mask so the the effective resolution is pretty low I mean it's probably a lot lower than my Sony CVM 1271 despite that this is uh, a 21 inch set versus a 12 inch set um, so I mean the picture, I mean it, I mean you look at the words up here, it's pretty blurry, but how much of that is just the fact that, you know, it was a, it was not a fine dot pitch tube in this thing. I don't know. So I'm now using the camcorder to generate color bars. And the first thing I notice is that when the color intensity dial is set to its center point, Boy, this looks really washed out. Uh, not very vibrant at all. In fact, the only way to make it look the way, you know, it would look on one of my video monitors is with the intensity turned up all the way. But if I have the intensity turned up all the way, on this videotape, the red is just really blooming. But the whole thing looks unnatural on the tape anyway. If I set it to about there, it looks pretty natural. So maybe that's just color bars versus a standard television set. I don't know. Maybe let me grab another tape and uh, we'll try that. So I'm playing another tape here and uh, to my eyes I think it looks pretty good. Um, I've got the color intensity set to its middle point, maybe slightly above its middle point, and uh, it looks good. I don't know why color bars look so faded on it, but when you're watching normal stuff like this, it looks fine. Um, I suspect the tube is a little worn out. The picture and brightness controls are up almost all the way, and uh, it's just barely bright enough to satisfy my eyes. Granted, we're in a slightly brightly lit room. Um, it definitely wouldn't be a problem in like a bedroom or something. But yeah, I think the tube's got a few hours on it. See, the problem is that I've spent the last two and a half years playing with professional video monitors. Really high quality, super high resolution monitors that can reproduce these bright vibrant colors and everything looks perfect and that's all I've been playing with for the last two and a half years. The last full-size uh, CRT television I owned was like 10 years ago. It was my 12-inch Sony Trinitron from 1976 that I had back then. So 
I, my reference point has completely changed from playing with professional video monitors that produce these super crisp images. So when I get a standard old television set like this, I don't know how good or bad is acceptable for it to look. So I'm trying to keep my, uh, my expectations reasonable here. But when I look at this set, just looking at it from here, sitting in my dad chair, um, I, I, it looks good. I am. I would be totally happy as it sits right now, putting this in my bedroom, hooking a Roku up to it. I think it would be pretty sweet. So of course, we've got a second one of these sets here. Um, we still have to go through and and see what see what this one does. Um, it's late at night. It's after midnight. Um, so I'm gonna go to bed, but uh, we'll play with the other set in, in the morning and see what it does. I knew that playing a VHS tape from a 35 year old VCR probably wasn't the best way to judge the quality of a television set, so before I went to bed I hooked up my DVD recorder, which has a bunch of old programming from the TV station stored on its internal hard drive, and what I saw backed up my uh, the opinion I was trying to have that this TV simply works just fine. I did notice uh, the rotation was a bit off, you know, if you saw a horizontal line like in the DVD recorder's GUI, that uh, it's a little bit crooked. Um, but other than that, things looked and sounded pretty okay. I decided that I would probably be just fine leaving the TV alone and enjoying it as is. So I decided to go to bed and see what the second TV had for us the next day. Welcome back. It's the next day. Time to test TV number two here. So there's a couple of things that I just noticed that uh, kind of intrigue me. First of all, these two TV sets are not completely identical. Notice right here, there's the silver stripes on this set. This one doesn't have them. It's got the decorative sticker. It's not like there's a piece missing or whatever. They are just cosmetically different. The dial uh, numbers are also a little bit brighter on this unit. Um, so there's something different going on with the, the dials. Maybe the dial lights are different. Unfortunately the sticker on the back isn't there on this one. So I can't confirm if it's indeed the same model. But I figure it must be because they're identical in every other way. But then there's something else interesting I noticed. Do you notice the difference in color between the two tubes? This one's, the tube, is got kind of a yellow tint to it. It's a bit darker. Um, so that's very interesting. So I wonder, do these have different tubes in them? Uh, what Did one of them have the tube replaced at some point? Or is it something environmental? Is, is you know, was this one, did this one see the sun more and it darken the phosphor somehow. I don't know, but I found that, uh, I noticed that and I thought, huh, that's kind of interesting. So, I've got my gear hooked up to this already. Um, I've got it plugged into the dim bulb tester already. Uh, all there is to do is now turn this one on and we'll see what it does. So I'll turn on my dim bulb tester. No power draw, that's good. And turn on the set. Loud. Loud buzzing. I don't know what that popping sound is. Let me just turn the picture up here. Oh gosh, that's uh, brightness and screen turned up all the way, or brightness and picture controls turned up all the way. It's very dark. Oh boy. Lots of color bleeding. Let me turn the color down a bit. That's the color down all the way. And uh, it's still really saturated. 
So was someone inside this and the, the tube is failing and someone went inside this and cranked up the drives for the, for the electron guns? The picture is also bouncing around. Oh my goodness, this one is in far worse shape than the other. Uh, let me just check my dials here. There's no dial lights on this one either. Maybe the whole tuner module was replaced on this. Or maybe this is indeed a different model, I don't know. Boy, it does, oh my goodness. Oh, the top of the raster, oh dear. I think this is failing before our eyes. Let me just put something else on here. Oh, it's not happy. Oh, the picture's collapsing! Oh, no! The picture is collapsing before our eyes. Alright, turn that off. Oh, we got some residual... Residual glowing of the phosphor there. That's a little weird. Oh, boy. This one is not in good shape. Uh, this... This one might actually go right back out to the, uh, to the garbage. I, I don't know yet. Wow. I honestly, after seeing how well this one worked, I thought it was going to be a cakewalk for the second one too. But, uh, oof. Way worse shape for the second one. I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. I took both of these TVs home in case one of them... Uh, worked and one of them didn't and that's exactly what we got we got one TV that works okay and we've got another one that works very much not okay so here's what I'm thinking I really don't have the time or energy or the space even in this new apartment to take on another repair project but Here's what I'm thinking. I will make an attempt to get this set working better. I will go through with opening it up and replacing at least some of the capacitors in it and see if that helps anything. And the reason I want to do that is because it'll at the very least uh, allow this TV to be used as sort of a test bed, a sort of a practice set because I think I still want to also do some work on this one. It's working okay. I would like to see it work even better than that. So I would, I do think I want to go through, replace capacitors, uh, adjust the yoke on it because the picture is slightly rotated, and uh, do some calibration adjustments. And I would like to see, I really like these TVs, and I would like to see one of these working really really nicely again it's such a such a cool tv set these were cheap and cheerful sets of their time hitachi was not very bottom of the barrel but they were low end um but the aesthetic is just so cool it's a lot of wood grain going on i really like the look of this tv and all i can think of in my head is how cool would it look next to my RCA VDT625 VCR. What a combo that would be. So yeah, I would like to see if I can make this working set work even better. And uh, what a better way to practice than on a set that is very much not working and see if I can get it working better. Uh, and practice working on TVs in general. CRT television sets are not one of those things I work on. I am nervous around them because of the high voltage. I'm nervous around them because it's glass and, you know, a risk of something getting broken. It's just really not something that I like to tackle, and I've certainly never tackled a set of this size or a, or a monitor of this size. So I think it'll be a good opportunity to get my feet wet. Worst case scenario, I've got a TV that works acceptably well and another one that is going to go out to the side of the road again. But we'll find out. I don't know. Uh, I don't think 
I'm going to be making another video of working on the bad set. Um, at the very least, I will be documenting it on my Mastodon feed, so follow me on Mastodon if you're interested in seeing more as well as other stuff that I do when I'm not uh, making YouTube videos. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. Wish me luck on uh, the work I'm going to attempt to do on these sets. And uh, I'll see you next time.